I'm Indy Nidell. And I'm Joaquin from Sabaton. And this is Sabaton History. Well, Metal Crew, with riots of destruction, wasps unleashed, and the priest killing the maiden, this is a very controversial song. Yeah, but, you know, we're talking about history here. We've got to tell it like it is. You know, it's war, it's brutal, and people are going to be pissed off when we have to stick to it. I think that's what you did here. All right, this song is about you. It's called The Metal Crew. Okay, uh, Metal Crew. <clears throat> metal Crew. Hi, guy. Hey. Are you ready to rock? Close enough. It was the old days, the do or die days, the days long before the internet and smartphones, before MP3s and streaming, mostly really even before CDs. The days when people gathered impatiently in front of small record stores, waiting to buy or, or just listen to the newest LP. And nights spent in packed clubs with, with sweat running down the walls. And speakers, of course, turned to 11. It was the 70s and the 80s when everything was louder than everything else. Okay, it must be said, and I'm the right guy to say it, that it is probably easier to write a complete history of the Great War than to write a brief history of heavy metal that everybody is happy with. But hell, let's try it anyways, and let's start at the beginning, when rock and roll still bore the stigma of being the devil's music and was, supposedly, only listened to by tattooed bikers, brawling city kids, and dirty hippies. Music that was, in turn, performed by self-proclaimed beer drinkers and hellraisers who proudly sang about dangerous drugs and even more dangerous women. If there is such a thing as a birth date for heavy metal, it might as well be February 13th, 1970, when Black Sabbath dropped their groundbreaking debut album. I know some people call Iron Butterfly's In Agata De Vida the first metal record, but they were really more of a psych band. You can argue about this all day, and I know you will, but whatever. The band, around frontman Ozzy Osbourne, took the still blues-heavy rock and roll sound of the late 60s and put a harder, gloomier, and even occult spin on it with terrifying distortion effects and even darker lyrics. Of course, many critics slammed it, but the younger generation loved it. The 70s, with bands like Uriah Heep, Thin Lizzy, and Nazareth, was a time when what we now call classic rock slowly got harder, faster, and louder. Bands began experimenting with a more aggressive and immediate style, fully embracing overdrive, distortion, and other effects, and the power of the electric guitar over the harmonic sound of the acoustic guitar, amplifying its sonic power to the maximum. Culturally, the hard rock and early heavy metal scene emerged from the dying hippie scene, but still had time to develop well before the rebellious and anti-social punk movement took hold. So the rock and metal bands kept their long hair. But instead of tie-dyed shirts, bell-bottoms, and the headbands of the hippies, they went on stage in denim and black leather, embroidered with spikes and rivets. Beards and hair were stylized to match the clothes, and consequently, the men and women on stage became cultural icons. It was the age of the rock star, the sex symbols and prophets of a new musical era who instead of love and spirituality, advocated and personified the adventurous life on the road. Freedom with a tough guy attitude. And if that freedom meant sex and drugs, so be it. Many of those rock stars came from humble working class backgrounds and industrial cities and sang about their everyday hardships, expressing their views on life and society with the harshest sound available. But that made them relatable to a huge audience of young people. While other kids went to the, the brightly glowing discos, rock and rollers met in dark, smoky bars and clubs. But for many, hard rock was still not hard enough, not by a long shot, and the boundaries of what could be done with the music had yet to be really defined. You were born a motorhead, bikes in flames, you race ahead. You knew the 
The movement at the end of the 1970s, hailed by the press as the new wave of British heavy metal, was bands like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and Saxon who brought new energy to the scene, focusing on, on complex guitar solos and a faster-paced sound. With the beginning of the 1980s, the heavy metal scene further defined itself, and many bands found a, a personal style of playing. You had the emergence of the double bass drum pedal, adding even more power to the ever faster music. You also had complex bridges and technical riffs with even faster guitar playing techniques like, like tapping and sweet picking. While other bands disassociated themselves from this and kept to the more bluesy style from the past or drifted towards the simplicity of punk rock or combined the punk energy with metal style and gave birth to thrash. Although heavy metal is often perceived as complex by nature, it is still bound to the basics of verse, chorus, verse. And it is therefore up to the band itself to strive further, perhaps with solos, perhaps with speed, perhaps effects, or perhaps songwriting, which gives metal such a potential to diversify itself. The popular band composition for a classic metal band was a singer, a rhythm guitarist, a lead guitarist, a bass player and a drummer, maybe only one guitarist. Keyboards had been actually quite common at the beginning though, as the influences from the 1960s were still strong and would later re-emerge when metal bands wanted to focus on a more symphonic and bombastic sound. The 80s are usually seen as the high watermark of traditional heavy metal, let's say traditional heavy metal, forever immortalized by the iconic vocalists, the air siren of Bruce Dickinson, or the clean shrills of Rob Halford, and the lightning guitars of guys like Ingwe Malmsteen. More and more metal bands dotted the record charts, but also bands that were counted as metal, although were actually more closely tied to classic hard rock, like Guns N' Roses, who climbed the charts to number one, reaching ever more people, and opening up the whole genre to the attention of a broader audience. Outside of its British birthplace, new heavy metal scenes with their own distinctive sound really emerged all over the world. In the US, in Germany, in Canada, Dio, Accept, and Wasp further continued developing classic heavy metal. Bands like Megadeth, Metallica, and Slayer strained the definition of traditional heavy metal to the maximum. Ever faster, ever more aggressive, with screaming guitars and smashing drums, not just the sound evolved, so too did the lyrical content. And the heavier the music became, the darker the lyrics became as well, focusing on the underbelly of humanity, war, bloodshed, and the deep abyss that is the human psyche. The parental advisory sticker and explicit lyrics warning soon became proudly worn badges. But with fame and infamy came a lot of criticism from the media, politicians, pseudo-academics who needed a scapegoat for the evils of society. The extravagant stage shows of bands like, like Motley Crue or Kiss were prime targets for criticism from conservatives, and metal lyrics were seen as promoting Satanism, hedonism, misogyny, and violence. But it was always a back and forth, you know? Metal fans wanted to distance themselves from society, proudly displaying the horns, pentagrams, and other symbols, but the media loved to have someone to blame. And of course, ever since time began, bands portray a certain image to please and inspire their fans. Now, in the 90s, many legends of the 70s and 80s took creative breaks or, or changed lineups and new influences began to join the mix. Grunge had been under the radar in the 80s, but bands like Soundgarden and Nirvana exploded as the decade began with a mix of metal, punk, and, and indie influences. But then suddenly, metal was mixed with alternative rock and even hip hop or electro, creating what is known as new metal with a U because 1990s. Actually, you know, guys, I remember people used to call it sports metal in the late 90s. I love that name. Sport, sports metal is so much better than new metal, isn't it? Anyhow, that music these days is often shunned by traditionalists as the, the bastard child and marked a low point with respect to traditional metal. New metal, though, love it or hate it, was in reality just a product of its time, of TV music videos and a lot of teen angst. 
But at the same time as new metal was entering the mainstream, even more extreme and aggressive subgenres of heavy metal began to emerge, especially in the far north of Scandinavia. Black metal and death metal, which topically oriented themselves often further towards history and the dark, violent past of mankind, expressed themselves through gloomy and misanthropic lyrics delivered in either high-pitched screams or deep growls. Following the footsteps of Venom, bands like Bathory or Unleashed embraced the mysterious atmosphere of the Viking heritage in the far north. The occult and the hedonistic, which had always been an influence in metal, were now expressed more strongly. Power metal bands, on the other hand, went the other way, trying to open themselves up to a broad audience with cleaner vocals and fantastical themes. Today, there are dozens of metal subgenres, some of which I realize I have not mentioned. But just the term heavy metal still stands out as a musical and cultural statement, a musical and cultural icon. Many of the old guard from the 70s and 80s are going strong in 2019 or, or have had some sort of revival. And there are hundreds of metal festivals all over the world that bring people together. Of course, the bands are influenced by those who have come before. Each band can probably cite a dozen or so bands that influenced their specific personal style of playing or changed their sound in a certain way. And in turn, those bands would further influence others in the future. In the end, all you need is to enjoy the music, have a good time, and noch ein Bier! Okay, Metal Crew, um, it's not about a battle. It's not about a soldier. It's not even about something like trenches. Um, what inspired this? Well, it was inspired by a previous song in the same vein called Metal Machine. Okay. And if I'm honest, with Metal Machine, that all came about because I needed to take a shit. I, I genuinely have no idea how to respond to that. <laughs> that is probably that the first is for time. another episode. It's probably the first time from a cliffhanger in my interview history that I genuinely have no idea what to say. Um, well, uh, so how do fans respond to a song that's not about traditional military history? In general, very good. I mean, yeah. it's a really nice way to end an album. I yeah. think. With, uh, on a different, lighter topic. Of course, we chose not to do that when we're dealing with concept albums like The Great War, like Carolus Rex. But Great War like. ends with In Flanders Fields, which of course is not you performing. So that's also a different ending. Yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, however, uh, a song, classic 80s hard rock song about uh, <laughs> priests killing maidens in metal yeah. churches might not have been suitable for Great War. It's inspired by a previous song called Metal Machine. Yeah. And in Metal Machine, we have song titles in the lyrics. Here we have metal bands in the lyrics. And the original idea for doing that was a emergency solution involving a toilet, basically. Mm. If I'm honest, we were recording the Primo Victoria album, and uh, I forgot to write lyrics to the last song. Ah. And I thought I'd finished, you know, I'd recorded all my tracks. I've sung all the songs. Oh, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna go have a beer. And uh, at that point, I pretty much heard from the studio. It's like, you walk him. It's time for you to sing on the last song. Oh boy. And I realized, oh fuck. I, I totally forgot about that one. Yeah, I just need to go to the bathroom. I ran into the bathroom, sat down. I think I used toilet paper and uh, upside down beer keg or something to write, to write the lyrics and I didn't know what to write about and I panicked but of course being a heavy metal studio there yeah, were sure. me metal magazines there oh, no, so I'm starting like okay yeah 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 and that was I have a phobia a fear of the dark fear of the dark by the maiden afraid to strangers okay the animal talks okay animal by wasp mm. <laughs> and I did it all in like 25 minutes or That's something brilliant. like that and then I came out like yeah 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 sorry something with the stomach you know I didn't want to pre pretend like I got this shit you know under control but, but I didn't. 
Did you do you still have that toilet paper or did you combine two jobs? No. <laughs> I st- <laughs> <laughs> no, I, st- I, uh, I still don't. And uh, I would. It would be interesting to see what price it would fetch on eBay. I know. <laughs> but when you came out with it, were they a little suspicious that you happened to have all the lyrics? No, 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 no. Nobody, okay. nobody suspected anything actually. Uh, uh, and I mean, in the end, though, that's a metal machine. But that inspired Metal Crew because. Uh, our fans loved it, you know. Oh, oh yeah. it's so nice to have that song at the end with all of those references, trying to find out stuff. So that's how we did Metal Crew, and then yeah. what later became Metal Ripper. Okay. Do you think about maybe be another one of these in your future? I would love to do one more. I mean, okay. it's so much fun to write it, both musically and lyrically, because it's. I mean, normally we cover military history. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. And to totally just let that go. I mean, I love doing it. I wouldn't want Sabaton to do anything else, but it's so lovely to just do something else for a song and have some fun. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, Metal Crew. We'll see you next time on Sabaton History. All right, everyone, you know the drill. Playlist, Time Ghost, World War II, Patreon, do it all, do it now!